In traveller culture, marrying non-travellers or gorgers has long been taboo. But despite grievances from both communities, intermarriage is on the increase. If it was my advice for the people that want to get married to gorgers, don't do it. Don't do it. Because it may work for a little while, but it don't last for very long, because two worlds collide. Romany Gypsy Tony Giles is considering marrying a non-traveller girl. For 30 years, his family have been based at a site known to locals as the Wrong Turn. Gypsies, if you notice, the younger ones, they like their men before their time. It's because they've been brought up hard. They either do two things, work or fight. I'm not much of a worker, as you can see. Fucking fight, that's one good thing. So I started boxing when I was eight, and then it went from there to bare knuckle fighting for years, to try and get money to survive. Otherwise, what, what other chance was it for me? Nothing. Against his family's wishes, Tony has moved into Danielle's house, and the culture clash has already begun. I'm just, I'm knackered from going out with a traveller man, to be honest. No, oh, I'm knackered from going out with a Gorgia, as well, <laughs> pregnant, hormonal, glamour model Gorgia. Will you change nappies? What? <coughs> yes, of course I will. Of course you will, what? What? Change nappies, yeah? yeah? Change the nappies. And get up in the night. I'm eight months pregnant and he's got me doing the hoovering and everything. I really feel sorry for traveller wives. Despite a long-standing distrust between the two communities, Gypsy and Gorgia relationships can overcome adversity. Last year, 17-year-old Sam married into the Gypsy community. I'm claustrophobic as well. <laughs> With her marriage to gypsy scrap dealer Pat, Sam won his family over by doing things the traveller way. What do you say to people who are watching who go, she's crazy, she's going to live in a trailer? Well, they're crazy because they've never tried it. Ten months on, Sam and Pat are living on a site next to an industrial estate. Sam is expecting a baby boy. These are all his T-shirts. Jumpers. Got like 30 odd pairs of jeans, got loads. Do you think that's quite a lot of jeans to buy for a new baby? Yeah, everyone's saying that he won't get a chance for wearing. Yeah, I used to live in a lot of these cupboards. <laughs> You've got more room than me. No, you ain't. You are. No, I won't can wear a new outfit every day of his life. <laughs> Sometimes if I get bored, I'll just get all these clothes out and just fold them up. <laughs> or if I'm feeling upset, I'll just go and buy him things. Cheers me up. Despite throwing herself into gypsy life, Sam is still struggling with the realities of living on a site. She hates it. No, I don't. I don't hate it. I know I like it, but... I just think it's a bit like doom and gloom on here. Yeah, I'd like it as well if there was more people my age on here. Because they're all older than me. So I'm lonely. Got no friends. When he's at work through the day, I'm just on my own. She wants a bath, basically. <laughs> if I could build a bath in here, <laughs> she'd be happy. Like it, and then he goes, oh, yeah, you can go to your mum's. But it's not the same. I want my own bath. A pram is next on the shopping list, but as a gypsy man, this is not Pat's domain. Pram's a pram. It's all down to her, that. I'll let her pick the pram. I won't be using it more. Well, you will. You go anywhere. You're the one pushing the pram. <laughs> I want a big cream one with all baby blue running through it with, like, ribbons and diamonds and things like that. <laughs> I'm not bothered. Cheap. <laughs> Cheap as possible. She likes the silver cross prams, but I think they look like coffins on wheels. Disgusting. He says there's no room for it, but there is room for it. I'll make room for it. <laughs> Chuck him out. <laughs> I don't like any of these. I want a cream, a cream leather one. I don't want this one. So this uh, is a complete waste of my day. Why is it a waste of your day? You're not going to pick one, are you? Well, if I see one, yeah. 
Let's go home. Oh, shut up. Marriage between gypsies and non-travellers, or gorgers, is rare. When it does occur, the clash of cultures can prove a strain on the relationship. Romany gypsy George Webb has recently separated from his gorger wife and has moved into his uncle's back garden. I'm always watching outside. In the rain, snow, whatever. You might go and live in a house, but you ain't got no freedom. You're in a rabbit hutch. You know, you might have all your comforts at hand, but you're unhappy, so what's the point? And you've got to do what makes you happy. George was married to a gorger for seven years, but his wife was unhappy with the role expected of her. When you marry out of your own breed, you don't know what's hit you. You really don't know what's hit you. She couldn't live my life. She realised that she couldn't live the way I live. She couldn't, she couldn't do without, like, not flicking a switch on, not without running water. And I wouldn't do it again, not for all the tea in China. George has two children from his marriage. Both now live with their mother. My concerns is, as the children get older, and I'm not there to see them on the right road, that they'll get more gorgeous ways in them, more non-gypsy ways in them, than they will gypsy ways in them. George restores caravans for a living, and his aunt and cousin are happy to help with the tasks his wife was reluctant to do. Kathleen! Can you come and clean this wardrobe for me so I can put the mirror back on? Are you going to clean or what? The women do the cleaning, the men do the, the earning. But when I was married was a different cut of fish. She used to moan to give me a glass of water. Get them sticky bits off because it'll make it unlevel. I never worked her like a dog. I done a lot for her. I do this here because I I've got a man coming and look at it and I ain't going to get it sold. Come on. The breakdown of it was she didn't want to do it. Look, pick that off with your nail. Pick it off. I'll tell you what, it's taken him a long time. Gypsy Tony has been sent on an urgent errand by his pregnant non-traveller girlfriend. It's red alert now. Danielle's waters has broke this morning. Five o'clock, that was a nice morning to get up. Her three weeks early as well. So, gonna get, the best thing for what well, we've been told for her to do is to have a spicy curry. It's funny, innit? I'm a pro cage fight. I don't get nervous before a fight. She's having a baby, I feel like a little kid. Hopefully everything will be all right, though. God on our side. Just hope it don't come out ginger. You all right? I'm trying to get a spicy curry for the missus. She's pregnant. <laughs> it's no good looking at that. I can't even read. And there's not that many pictures. Tony has three other children from a previous relationship with a traveller, but wasn't present at any of the births. Danielle wants me with her. Oh. It's just not a gypsy thing to do. It's like a woman's thing, pretty much. So she don't understand that, though, so I'm going to have to uh, try and compromise with her on this one. So I've been roped into it. Already, thank you very much. When I go into labour, he, he's not going to cope with it because he saw my water's broke and nearly passed out, so I don't know how he's going to deal. He had to hang his head out the window, nearly passed out, and basically threw up out the window just over a little bit of water. I thought you pissed yourself. Baby, I... You just stood there. Baby, you know the difference between... You stood between... there and you was all like... <laughs> a little pile of it. So what would you do? I nearly jumped out the window two storeys high, head first. Sam and Pat have registered the birth of their new baby boy, Patrick Tom. Their son will begin his life in a caravan, but his identity is yet to be decided. He's going to be classed as a gypsy, so he needs to be able to stick up for himself. Because, unfortunately, I think he might get bullied. I wouldn't have anyone calling him or anything. 
just because his dad was a gypo. <laughs> Could be bullying from both sides. Yeah, there were. So might be little gypsy kids that don't agree with him. It does make him think that like people were bullying him because like he's a gypsy or like people are bullying him because he's not. You know what I mean? I don't think he'll be classed as a gypsy. I think he will do. I think he won't. I think he will. No, because he's not. Well, he is. Gypo like his daddy. And where's he living? Is he living in a house? He's a bit of both. But mostly a traveller. He's going to be spoiled. <laughs> Romany Gypsy George already has two children from his marriage to a non-traveller. Come here. Hi, hi, bo, 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 bo. Come here. Despite the fact that they live with their mother, George is determined they don't lose their gypsy identity. How can we get them changed? Look, they ain't never been like, brought up with clothes like that. I'm not going to put my child like in a jogging suit or something. Look at that. Right, now he's out. Yeah. You're done. Go out and play. I've got to keep the clothes because I've done it before. I've gone and I've brought them loads of clothes before and I've never seen them on, on them again. And they've told me that Mummy chucked it away. Mummy chucked it away. Probably because they're too gypsy for her. Too travelified. <laughs> Today, George is taking his children to Dartford Fair, a traditional gypsy gathering. Why do you like bringing the kids places like here, George? Because I do, they like it. There's a lot of travelling children here. There's a few cousins here and bits and pieces like that. And Find them some nice little outfits, some nice little clothes. What are you looking for then? Just some bits of clothes for them. Um, see what I can see about. What I can keep in the trailer. Any little boys overcoats in yet? Yeah, in the cover there, look, they're beautiful. They're nice as well. No. The fair is another opportunity for George to instill his children with gypsy values. It's very important for my children to come to a place like this. The thing is, they're stuck in the school with all the gorgeous, on an hour stake with the gorgeous, seeing all gorgeous things. And gorgeous find things acceptable, what travelling and gypsy people don't find acceptable. You know, in the school, out the school, bedtime, sausage, beans, mash, all that routine thing, my children ain't used to that. Yeah, you know how it goes, don't you? Look, understand me, right? Gorgeous, that estate what I was on, right? You've got people taking drugs, you've got men living with men, you've got women living with women, you've got them getting the gyro, going up the road, spending it on drink, the children are filthy and hardly fed, they're like that, like a knacker. I've got more fat on my toe. And with my children, it's in their brain to be outside and be playing with other travelling children. You like that white one? Show this one. Travellers want better things for their children. The love I've got for my children, it never stop, no matter what happens. In Berkshire, Danielle is going into hospital to have her labour induced. Breaking with gypsy convention, Tony intends to be present at the birth. When the lady says push, just push. And you've had one of those little contraction things that... Nothing's happened. I know something is going on, but it's not contractions. Are you hungry? No. Have you got no quiet? I feel like we're going to be here for days. Tired of waiting, Tony leaves the moral support to Danielle's friend, Nina. Tony wants to be here in the labour, but I know that he's not going to be able to stomach it. There's no <laughs> way he's going to be able to stomach it. He heaves over like a bogey. How, how is he going to cope with childbirth? As the labour begins, there is still no sign of Tony. Something's going on. Where is it actually hurting? Round. Is that the wound? Oh, I'm getting little pains. 
Oh my god, and it's gonna get a hell of a lot worse. 10.32, so is it gone now? No, it's just aching. Where are you now? Yeah, you wanna be? You're just starting to piss me off now. Broke myself into something here. Gutted. And I'm stepping into uncharted waters now. I've had to psych myself up. I'm hoping. Not too much blood and guts. I faint. I swear to God, I will. I will say one thing, though. It's half emotional in there. And don't realise not many travelling men would see this side of it, but it's intense. And see why they stay away. <laughs> Romany gypsy Tracy Heron is proof that marriage between gypsies and non-travellers can work. Yeah, and then that'll be all opened. Yeah. All balloons and cream all on the walls, all the pictures are coming down. Tracy has been married to her gorgeous husband, Phil, for nearly 10 years. Didn't you have them on your last dress? Lots of diamonds, lots of sparkles. Glitter. Glitter. After a low-key marriage at a registry office, Phil has been saving ever since for the lavish wedding Tracy has longed for. We didn't really have a lot of money at the time when we first got married. So we went to the registry office, had a quick wedding in there, and we sort of always said whenever we do get enough money in that, then we'll do it again properly. So, hence the reason why she's doing it massive. <laughs> Four big stretch hammers we've got. I think you've got 14 bridesmaids in it. Yep. We've got four white horses in a carriage, a big pink carriage. I think every girl dreams of a little like, fairy tale day. I hope everything goes like perfect and I get that day. Despite their successful marriage, their relationship was met with opposition to begin with. It was a little bit hard to start with your dad, wasn't it? Oh yeah, like my dad. Yeah, because I was in the army at the time and it wasn't a thing that a traveller would do. Yeah, and I thought but I was going to get right. hung, strung and quartered. Yeah, so I did not. Right, I was working on the farms and my phone would ring and my brother would be like, who's that on the phone? I'd be like, just a friend. I was so pleased for you. I thought you were going to call me Tracy's. <laughs> Tracy isn't the only woman in her family to marry outside the gypsy community. Her cousin Maria also married a non-traveller, but the relationship soon turned sour. To my ex and his family, you know, I was scum of the earth and I hadn't done anything wrong. No. Yeah. You know, the spitting at me, the pikey, you know, that, that hurt. Just because we were born and bred in a caravan, yeah. in a trailer, however we'd like to say it. You should be proud of what you yeah. are. I can't, you know, it just, it, it does. It, it brings tears to my eyes because, you know, we're normal. Yeah. They're the ones missing out, not no one else. You're worth a million to them. <laughs> Bless you, right? Yeah. Bless you. Wow. Romany Gypsy George only has access to his children twice a week. <laughs> and he never misses an opportunity to share his gypsy traditions. Today, he has set his sights on a special treat for lunch. A hedgehog. So where do you tend to find them? You tend to find them up close, right near the trunks of the trees. And you've got to look. That's why you've got to poke to see. How would you eat it? Just sit and eat them round the fire while they're being cooked. It's like, not like a meal thing, sort of thing. I suppose like years ago, Trevor's like made them as a meal. It's more like a starter. An hors d'oeuvre. Another cultural aspect George hopes to pass on is the gypsy language known as Romanus. It's not used as much as what it should be used. Well, I ain't got a lot of people to talk it to, really. The main words, really, is like kushti, chore, gel, malt, kaka. And what do all those words mean? Malt means woman or young girl. Um, what else did I say? Gel means go. Waffity bok means bad luck. Waffity means bad. Bok is luck. Well, to tell you the truth, old fashioned travellers years ago thought it was like waffity bok. Unlucky to write it down. And that's the worstest word what you keep hearing. Gathers. Gathers. Gather. They think that it means the police, but it don't. 
Gather, the real meaning for gather means hide. <laughs> Back at his trailer, George is joined by some of his extended family for a traditional meal. Although hedgehogs have proved elusive, George's last rabbit hunt was more successful. I caught it. Done it last night. What was George like growing up? Oh, he was a lovely boy. Always was old fashioned. Always. Because I think it was because I was brought up with old people, tell you the truth. Old fashioned ways of going on. Who wants to be modern? Just four weeks until Phil and Trace's dream wedding, they have run into difficulties. Well, for someone who's saved up for nearly 10 years, to do it properly, and then for someone just to rip you off and take it off you. I hope they choke on it, that's all I can say. The wedding planner they've hired has gone bankrupt and made off with their savings. To keep trying to get hold of him, no contact back at all. Um, phone numbers have been changed. cut off, changed, cut off. She used to rip off merchant, that's all I can call her. I'd like to give her a piece of my mind, I would, literally. It's just not fair on them. It's not fair on the children either to see the mum like it. Most costly of all, 14 bridesmaids dresses ordered from China have gone missing. Until I get them, it's just keep thinking with days and days to go. You just want everything here and to be perfect and it to be a special day in it and the day I never had and yeah, it's hard. Don't cry. Hmm? Stop crying. Damn. Yeah. What's mummy some tissue please? She's been like really tearful because she don't she doesn't know what's gonna be happening with our dresses and like if they're gonna come or not. You don't do that to gypsies. I know definitely I would smack her. I'd know I would. George's day with his children is coming to an end. I can't see why I can't have my children longer. I just said to the judge, I said, look, I said, I love my children, I think the world of my children. I said, and I'm a very, very good dad. He didn't understand me. There's gorgeous judges, there's gorgeous solicitors, I had a gorgeous wife, and I'm just the only traveller. The access agreement is very strict, but George has lost track of time. You really like it? If George is late returning his children, he could lose the right to see them. How late are you? 15 minutes. I hate this. It's what I hate. You're, on a, like, you're like a criminal on the tag with your children. Come on, quick. Quick as you can. Run. I hate it. Bloody hate it. Oh, how do you feel after you've dropped the Terrible. I feel terrible. I feel like driving myself through that house there. Standing there waiting as well with the boyfriend. He's a gorgeous again. Yeah. Right up her street. What she wanted. She got what she wanted, but she lost what she had. Another lonely night now. During a difficult birth, Tony returned to Danielle's side in the hospital. Their son, Rudy, is now six weeks old. Childcare is considered to be woman's work in the gypsy community, but Tony has conceded to a more hands-on approach. Listen, I'm not just a cage fighter. I'm not just a pretty face. Look, I'm a fully trained dad. 
four kids now. So, and this was the first kid that I was there through the birth with. And I wish I would have been there with the other ones, really, because it's uh, how much emotion and everything he's put into it. Mwah. Look, he's going to be a little cage fighter. I can tell. Definitely going to be a little cage fighter. Danielle is hoping the baby will heal wounds with Tony's family. Tony's mum made us this. Um, because she makes all these um, blankets and stuff. Um, so he's a very spoilt boy. It's important that he has a relationship with his other side of the family. Just as long as they treat my child how they treat the other children, then that's fine. With just 11 days to go until Tracy's wedding, there is some good news at last. A delivery has arrived all the way from China. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, it feels like Christmas. Mummy, I found it. OK, Rachel, she's 41 inches. Oh! I'll snap the arm hanger. One, two, three, four, five. Right up until 7 o'clock this morning, we were still phoning. I'm not really getting any answers, but I'm just pleased now they're all here. It's a big weight off everyone's shoulders now. Yeah. Just when things are looking up, Tracy notices there's a problem with the bridesmaid dresses. In the boxes, have any of their sashes in there, Mum? What sashes? The little ones are supposed to have a big sash of ivory and in a massive bow that hits the floor. No. The bankrupt wedding planner has failed to pay for the complete order. I'd like to get hold of her. Get hold of her, pull her wig right off her head. Been paid for once. Why should we have to keep paying twice on everything? Well, I'm going to have to order it tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll get them all work next week from you. Okay then. All right. All right then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Well, no. I said I'm not. We're not paying for them again. She's sending them. She's getting them made, and they'll be here next week. What well, should we have to pay for them again? It's right though, isn't it? Don't. I'm losing my temper now. Four months since the birth of their son, Rudy, the culture clash has taken its toll on Tony and Danielle. Tony's used to girls that stay at home and cook and clean for him, which I do do, but then I think, why should you go out and I stay at home? I'm not having that. Tony sometimes thinks that he's still Peter Pan and he needs to grow up a bit because I'm not going to sit at home looking after the baby while he goes out. The couple have decided on a trial separation. It's just two different people, two different upbringings. People look at us, they think we're all the same, it's not. We get taught different things. At the beginning of the year, it was all going good. New relationship, new babies on the way. And everything arranged for the christening, and just got a block on it. But I love Danielle, you know? So, hopefully things can work out, can't they? <laughs> Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Ten years after a low-key wedding, Romany Gypsy Tracy is renewing her vows and having the lavish celebration she always dreamed of. Nothing ever goes planned, does it? As long as we're all in church on time, we're getting there. There are 14 bridesmaids needing a full makeover. Have fun, love you all! I've still got quite a few left, but I'm trying to go as quick as I can to get it done. Just keep calm. <laughs> Not everyone is aware of the tight schedule. Bend it, bend it, Megan, because I don't like that at the minute. It's looking too outwards, yeah, bend it right in, that's it. And Megan, you know those bits here, can you poke them up a bit as well? Megan, you know that bit there that yeah. curls and goes there, can you bring that like out a bit? Yeah. Yeah, but just tell them at the end of the day, yeah? Just tell them just to get their hair done and be back here for 11 o'clock. Yeah, tell them don't start messing around. Don't panic, OK? Box, don't All right, love you, bye-bye. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Fucking boys, mate. 
put it up. No, no, put it, put it back. It's the day of baby Rudy's christening, and his gorgeous mother Danielle has reunited with his gypsy father Tony in time for the special occasion. Hopefully everything will go all right. I hope. The celebration is also a test of whether their families will get on together. My family haven't met Tony's family. This is like the first day. <laughs> it's a massive moment. <laughs> The worst that could happen is if like, the pie got turned upside down or something. Just hope that people can hold their tempers till, till another day, just not on my boy's christening. Tony's children from his previous relationship are joining in the celebration. What are you going to do, Tony, if any little boy tried kissing her? Are you? Are they getting knuckle sandwiches? Yeah. We're supposed to leave in 10 minutes, I think. I ain't even got change yet. Grab my suit, please. I've got wet nails. Oh. Can someone grab Tony's suit? I've got one shoe at the moment. One shoe. How are you feeling about the two families meeting together? I feel a little bit of nerves. I don't never get nerves, but I've got a bit of butterflies. So let's hope it all goes all right. Oh, yeah. No! Joe! Yeah. No, yeah. Are you ready? No. No? What are you going to do around? What am I going to do? I need to go for a poo. Oh. Eight minutes too. Oh, we're late. Where's the baby? Oh! Oh my god, I just shut my train in the door. With both gypsy and non traveller parents, Rudy's christening is an opportunity for him to be welcomed into both communities. So, is baby Rudy a traveller or a gorger then? Well, Sure, but say well, he's half and half, and he, you know that anyway. But uh, but does it matter? We are what we are. You are what you are. Everyone's everyone's down from up there. Or we all go to I won't. But anyway, you know, all one. That's what I look at. Oh, well, hopefully all goes nice at the church. Then I'm ready to rock and roll in in the club. Do a few dances. Show me me, me Michael Jackson. Uh, uh, walk and bang. That's it. I'm ready to rock. No, it's fine. Just going Rudy's christening has finally united both Gorgia and Gypsy families. My tick keeps falling out. My tick keeps falling out. Rudy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> How did you enjoy that ceremony? Yeah, it was a good, good ceremony. All went well. Everyone, everyone's getting on with each other, so happy days. Well, I didn't even hear it, to be honest with you. I had, I had five, five bottles of holy water. No, I do that because I'm a nurse, you know, so I had a nervous break then years ago. Not really, you know, me checking now on that. Now I'm on a rock and roll. Back in Canterbury, there's half an hour to go before Tracy's wedding ceremony begins. Just trying to breathe and just trying to enjoy every bit now. Come on, darling. As the 15 bridesmaids make their way to Tracy's house, news of the wedding has quickly spread through the neighborhood. Yeah, it's going to take half an hour. We're going to be late for the wedding if we're not careful. Over at the in-laws, Phil's plans for a perfect white and pink themed wedding are in jeopardy. It's a, fu it's a fucking black one. I ordered a white one. Two was supposed to be white, one was supposed to look like a creamy goldy colour, and the other one was a pink one. Don't tell me that's black. It's a black one. Oh, shit. Not unless I'm fucking colour blind. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, you can't do the fucking piss or what? <laughs> Frick. Oh, I've all this to come. <gasps> Mum? Yeah? Dad told us at the house, yeah, but it's a white, it's a black one, not a white one. What do you mean it's a black one? She said, what do you mean it's a black one? Exactly what he says, it's a black one. Well, they know it should be white. Well, they know it should be white, she said. 
That's naughty. Is he alright? He's swearing. So we've got a black hammer. Great. Right. Doesn't look like he ate him. Fucking ate him? <laughs> Fucking joke. What happened to the white one? Well, they didn't phone you at all? No. Despite her wedding planner going bankrupt, lost dresses and a wrong coloured limo, Tracy is finally getting the extravagant wedding she has always craved. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Tracy, you have committed yourselves to each other in marriage, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till parted by death. Is this your understanding of the covenant and promise that you have made? A bit louder? It is. It is. It is. Thank it is. you. <laughs> You're beautiful. Get a drunk later on now, can't we? <laughs> It's a rare occasion when gypsies and gorgeous celebrate side by side, but today they've come together for Tracy and Phil. Oh, it's amazing, it's that my fairy tale dream that was come to. Although this union has proved that a mixed marriage can work. There is still some division among Tracy's family about the two cultures coming together. I think they should keep to their own kind to make obviously the family tradition going. Because obviously how I think and feel of it all is that the tradition ain't going to carry on going. It's going to fade and fade away. My personal thing is that you should keep your family to your family and that you shouldn't mix with anyone. I married a Gorgia, but I wouldn't marry a traveller. And I wouldn't, because I want my marriage to work and not be a few years of either beating or a divorce down the line. What woman wants to put herself through having slaps? Because I wouldn't. I mean, my husband even dreamed to beat me. I said, I'll kill him. <laughs> I'll beat him while he's sleeping. <laughs> I'll execute him in the bathroom too. <laughs> Baby Rudy's christening ceremony is over, and the after party has begun with both families celebrating together. Listen, we've got gorgeous gypsies and gays all, all, all communicating, all, and they're all enjoying themselves. Did you ever think that would happen? No, I was expecting a little bit of tear up, wasn't I? A few black eyes. For the first time, Danielle is being truly accepted by Tony's family. And Danielle looks beautiful as always. Yes. 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 So does man in her hot pants. Woo! Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see you, baby. Shake, Shake it ass. Ass. Shake it <laughs> ass. No, in all in all, it has been a lovely day. No trouble, no nothing. See all us gypsies, we ain't all rough and ready, are we? No. We're all Only her at the end. <laughs> 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 I'll clear my family out then. <laughs> Just over an hour later, there's been an incident in the car park. 
I, I honestly don't know what's going on outside. I really no. don't. It's just, just came I don't out. even know the two people. Like two people are arguing, but I, I don't even know. I don't know them. I don't know who they are. Gulja, Traveller, whoever it is, all right. As long as everyone's nice to me, I'm nice to them. Anyone upset my family, and there's one place they're going. Damn, might as well. In the. While the joining of gypsies and non-travellers is still considered unthinkable by many, a happy marriage like Tracy and Phil's is achievable. How does this compare to your first time? Cars a hundred times better, isn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't change one single little bit. I would. But. The black hummer. There's a lover in my life. He Whilst on their wedding day, traveller girls take centre stage. For the other 364 days of the year, who really rules the roost? Is it a man's world, do you think? Yeah, a very man's world. Yeah, if, they're, if, they're, if you'll let them run, they will. They will. Pub every night, especially on a weekend, dressed up, off down the town, to leave the wife, like DVs at home. If you'll let them get away with it, yes, they'll do it. Woman! Your fucking jukebox is not fucking gone. Irish traveller Paddy Doherty has been married to his wife, Roseanne, for 33 years. Right, did you put your buttons all up front? At the front? Me, you put the button. Ah, me got a lift off. Five, four, three, two, one. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know when we get drunk? Me not get drunk. Yeah. What do we do? Come <laughs> Despite having the occasional romantic moment, as the landlord of this trailer park in Salford, Paddy's not a man to be messed with. Get the fuck off this side! Don't fucking give me your lip! You have a fuck out, Phil! What's the, what's the PD stand for? It stands for Paddy Doherty. You're not coming in this side taxing any of my tenants, none of my tenants, bullying any of my tenants, or bullying anyone on this side. That's who I am, PD, Paddy Doherty. Paddy runs the caravan site on behalf of the council who own it. He holds the best plot where he lives in his deluxe chalet. This is my home, yeah? Well, you live, your home is your castle. You know, like the Queen lives in Buckingham Palace, and we live here. But I swear on my baby's life, and God may kill me stone there. This is, this is Buckingham Palace for me. Paddy's always here, friend. Everyone on the site. Anything to do with the place. Police will come here and then Paddy will go around and sort it out. If there's anything like domestic violence and things like that, the women will always come over to Paddy. While traveller men enforce the rules of day to day living, when it comes to weddings, they take a back seat. No D trim, not too much, my friend. N make it look neat, yeah? One man who's doing just that is 22-year-old builder Johnny, who's getting married next week. How much have you had to do with the planning and preparation of this wedding? Been planning my haircut now for three months. That's about it, really. I have no planning at all in it. It's more or less a woman, women's planning, you know, for everything to be OK, everything to be all right. Irish traveller Johnny has been joined for a male grooming session by his brother-in-law-to-be who's also named Johnny. Men prefer just not to be involved and just let the woman sort it out and do everything her way, you know what I mean? And that's it, there's no arguments then. It just makes life an awful lot easier, Hans. Which part of the day are you looking forward to the most, do you think? Getting drunk. While the lads take it easy, Johnny's 21-year-old fiancée, Cindy, is in the thick of organising her big day. And we're stopping my feet. I never stopped going the whole day. Driving back and forward, back and forward, picking up suits, picking up underskirts, picking up the bridesmaid dresses, picking up the bridesmaid's shoes, picking up the bridesmaid's jewellery. I haven't got my dress yet, haven't got my jewellery, haven't got my shoes. The 
boy be uh, head of the home, really, I suppose. You know, woman just charges cleaning. Looking after the men, pampering them, washing them, feeding them. You know, manicure, pedicures and the men, and massaging them, shaving them, all that, you know, that's what the women's in charge of. You know, looking after the men. She's not gonna like that, is she? That's when you seen the other day. I'm it's now four days fun. before her wedding, and like many traveller girls, Cindy has some ambitious plans. We need to confirm that with the venue tomorrow about the helicopter. To help her have the wedding of her dreams, she has hired wedding planner Gaynor. Look, that's when I got to the top of the tables, because all like everyone, yeah, like with travellers, they don't, they don't sit, like know how like non-travellers can have a wedding and they can, they, they can have a table mark and don't, and they have yeah. their name table, tables, but with us, they just sit where they want. Yeah. They don't, yeah. they don't do anything like that there. So instead of that there, I only got the names put on the top table of the bride and groom and the parents and the best man and woman. Yeah. But for everyone else's tables, I just got Jesus loves you. No, nice. This is the first time Gaynor has planned a traveller wedding, and she's been dealing with some of the most extravagant requests. On the table, she's having the martini glasses with the peach water, with the three floating candles. Uh, I did tell her that we might have trouble getting peach floating candles. <coughs> But she wants photographs with the helicopter. She wants, she's got a fantastic dress that I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll see for yourself. Um, she's got a massive, big, white LED dance floor. And it's all sparkly. And But she's got an owl that's going to be carrying the ring, which I don't think anybody else has done. For the travelling man, status is very important. And status usually comes on four wheels. They actually come up and down when you're driving as well. I was driving yeah. it yesterday and it come down. Paddy usually gets a new car twice a year. Today is delivery day. Oh, yeah. Cars and vans and trucks and caravans, trailers we call them. Very important to travellers. You, you want nicer things what other people's got. So you work harder. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? If you've got a nice car, you feel good. You're driving a heap of scrap, you don't feel good, do you? Whenever Paddy gets a new car, he drives it to the local cemetery, the resting place of his son, who was killed in a car accident 14 years ago. I like to do silly things like this. It keeps me happy. And I want to show him my power. Yeah, it's Carson, you know what I mean now? What do you think about it? And I'll put one of his CDs on now. Put his song on, and I'll just play his one song way through. You know what I mean? And that's it, really. Paddy has had ten children in total, but only five have survived. Four children died shortly after childbirth. Patrick, his firstborn son, had just turned 18. Because he was your firstborn. Your firstborn is everything, isn't it? Your firstborn is your legend. He's what you're going to make, what you were never. And you, you're going to give him things what you never had. And you're going to make sure that he has everything what you never had. Every year, on the anniversary of Patrick's death, Paddy and his family hold a memorial at the graveside. In a week's time, dozens of friends and family will descend on the cemetery for this unique traveller tradition. In the meantime, Paddy tries to keep his spirits up. Look at this, look at this! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> Good to be able to still have a laugh. Yeah, life is very short. They're only having fun, and you have to have fun having a laugh back at them. This is what this is what I tell you, you know what I mean? Laughing can turn into crying, crying can turn into laughter. That's nice, I needed a bit of a buzz like that. For 22-year-old Johnny, the fun is about to begin. 
He will soon be taking his wedding vows. I've got two hours left, freedom. Uh, so we're gonna go wild <laughs> for the next two hours. Huh? We probably won't even be at the wedding. Wedding planner Gaynor's first job of the day is to feed the bridal party. I mean, they're not just conforming to the norm. I mean, I never ever imagined in my life that I'd get asked to go to McDonald's, but that's just the way it is. Hello! 21-year-old <laughs> bride-to-be Cindy has spent weeks organising the catering, dresses, dance floor, decorations and flowers, which don't quite meet her mother's high expectations. Your flowers not the way you thought they'd be. I thought they would have been more whiter. You know. What? I'm the next one. No, the woman's just asking questions. She's not on camera. Please, I like them. Stop wrong, Cindy, today. Stop shouting today. I'm not interested about them. I said that seven times, Mommy, please. <laughs> I don't want it to be too stressful, obviously. Oh, yeah. I think after I get dressed, I can start relaxing a bit because it's just time to go along with the play and whatever else. Think of something you enjoy doing most. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, girls, let's try another one. What's Woo! Up? <laughs> That'll do. Many travellers try to outdo each other, and one guaranteed way to impress your wedding guests is to arrive out of the blue. Literally. <laughs> but Johnny is in danger of denting his male pride and losing his nerve. I was a bit dreading it in one way, you know. For some on a helicopter. Hope everything goes okay with us. Are you driving a plane, mate? Sorry? You're the driver. Pilot, yeah. Pilot, yeah. How long did it take us to get there? Five minutes. Five minutes? Foot right down. <laughs> which, one, which one's the passion seat? Hey, it's your big day, is it, Johnny? Yep. Do you feel it's important to look beautiful for you or for Johnny or for me? I'm not beautiful, like, but I think it's nice to look nice for your wedding day for. And then it's something you're going to look back on for the rest of your life, you're going to look back on the photos. As Johnny takes to the sky, back on solid ground, Cindy is finding it hard to relax. Tina, you can you, you come Sorry, Mr. Patrick. Yeah. You don't stand, want to delay it. Stand, stand there. No, I'm not standing there. I stand there. Yeah. The wedding is being held in the grounds of a private country estate, a popular venue with local footballers and soap stars. Frightening. <laughs> Life changing. Held outdoors, complete with Beckham esque thrones, the wedding has reached new heights of originality as the marital rings are delivered by Spirit the Owl. My lawful wedding husband. Awful wedding husband. Tav and From this day forward. <laughs> until death to his daughter. Cindy Johnny, I now pronounce you my wife. Surprise. Just when the guests thought it was over, there is one more surprise. 
We're giving them a count of three. Two, two, As the wedding guests hit the sparkly dance floor, Groom Johnny gets his first kiss as a married man. Are you pleased with how it went? Yeah. Definitely. Very, very, very happy with how it went. Praise God it went the right way, it went God's way, and everyone's still having a good night, and praise God it went, it went lovely. How does it work now? Does, does he own you? What's, what's yeah. the... Yeah, it's not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, best way of saying it, yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. How the lamp Many Irish traveller men see it as their duty to provide the means for their family to afford the luxuries in life. But it's down to the women to choose the look. And travellers tend to have very specific designs. I think we've all got the same taste. It's like the Versace look. What is the Versace look? It's like the marbly effect. Um, yeah, the marbly effect sort of thing, shiny. Ali, what's, what's the Versace effect? A hole in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy is taking wife Roseanne shopping to find the perfect furniture for their new chalet. This Italian design shop in Staffordshire is a favourite with the travelling community. I'd like something like that. Maybe with a bit of silver in it. Huh? That. More cream and maybe where the, where the gold parts is silver. That's nice, isn't it? It likes gold like the diamonds on it. What do you think? Hmm? Sadly, I don't give it a damn. <sighs> come on, my son, come to daddy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come to me, baby. Yeah. Come to daddy, I says. Come yeah. to me, woman. Yeah. No sense of humour. You know, honest to God, you know, the biggest majority of travellers, when they see this, they say, ah, Paddy Doddy or Patrick. When shopping with his woman, and they've got to say, yeah, and laugh it off at the same time. Why would they laugh at that? Because, honestly, very rare you get a, a travelling man going well, shopping with his wife, you know what I mean? Or, very, very rare. You don't see it. You know what I mean? You just don't see it. Why not? It's, 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 it's a bit embarrassing to say it because it's not a man's role, is it? I know you say the fucking and these are a bit old fashioned, but it's, 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 not, it's not a role, is it? Traveller men are notoriously secretive about money. Paddy is Come reluctant on, for his haggling skills to be filmed. Just explain why travellers don't. Because we're private, like that, isn't it? Everyone's private. Like, he'll, write, he'll write a price out to me, and no one will know, and I'll write down to him, and he, and he can say and no, he's just yes. Between me and him, and between me and him, you know what I mean? No. And why does it have to be that because way? Because that's the way we are. We've always been that way of our, all our lives. No matter what you buy off a traveller, he, he won't tell another traveller what he bought it for. It's, it's just. It's our, it's, it's our culture, it's, it's our way of life. It's something that they've done all their life, ever since they're children. If someone asks you a price or something, you'll always bargain them. You'll always say, I will take so much. <laughs> Travis and I feel like they've got a deal, don't they? Yeah, they? yeah. I think it's even if you just give them a pound less than what it was, they go away happy. They feel it's lucky. So did you get the price you wanted? Yes. Exactly? No. Nearly, but I'm still happy with it. God, it's got a bit. Give me a bit of a discount. You know what I mean? No, truth. Yes, he did. Hey, you gentleman. I mean, nice thank you. Me look, on my life. Thank you very, very much. I mean, a lot of respect for you. A lot Thanks. of respect. Thank you. Bye. Traditionally, it's the men who are expected to have jobs in travelling communities. Hi there. However, 22-year-old Romani Gypsy Violet Anne has been working for five years in a budget hotel at East Midlands Airport. I am very independent, very independent. I go get my own job, I've got my own money, I have my own car. But she will soon be leaving her job 
sacrificing her independence for the sake of a man. When I get married, obviously, I just can't get up and go when I like. I've got a husband to feed, I've got a place to clean up all the time, I've got other things to worry about. Violet Anne has lived in a house her whole life. Her parents were brought up in wagons, the traditional gypsy way. God almighty, look at my clan. This is me mum sitting in the showers. That's where we come from, round a stick far. So we didn't ought to be talking about posh things, big posh weddings and everything. Look, this is where we come from. This fella here is me. A little bit of history, I suppose. For a gypsy, 22 is relatively old to be getting married. Why did you decide to get married? I don't know, really. <laughs> getting a bit old in the tooth, probably. <laughs> don't want to be left on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Spinster, is it? <laughs> did, did you know he was going to propose? Yeah. I didn't. The money it's costing me, I'd have had a hit man on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping for Violan to make a go of it, tell you the truth. And if she comes back, she's going to be kicked straight back to where she's come from for the first few times and made to try and make a go of it. When Violet Anne gets married, she will exchange her childhood home for this marital caravan and move over a hundred miles away from her parents. I've never left me mum and dad, never. So that is gonna kill me, I dread it. And what's gonna be the hardest part, do you think, about leaving? I don't know really, leaving them, leaving me family, leaving me, me things, what I've done, like go to work, do me own sort of stuff. Will you be happy? Yes, yeah. Violet Ann is getting married in 10 days time. To fulfill her role as a gypsy wife, Violet Ann is giving up her job. Having worked for five years as a hotel receptionist, she is about to work her last shift, but not before dropping a bombshell on her boss, who doesn't know she's a gypsy. Because I've never told them I'm a gypsy, when gypsies is on the premises, they always say, oh, if the gypsy comes in for a room, do not let them in. And you think, oh, if ever they knew I was a gypsy, I'd be straight out that door. I do feel proud to work in such a high place like that to handle other people's personal details and them not knowing that I'm a gypsy. So it is nice, so when they do find out that I'm a gypsy, that they can trust some gypsies. How busy are you today? Oh, it's, it is, it, I can't make out. It's really busy on the floor sheet, uh, but on the system it's still saying like 31. Manager Sonny has been Violet Ann's boss for many years, unaware she is a gypsy. Violet's worked with us for about since 2005, Five. wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long while. So yeah, she's always been reliable, so that's been the key thing for me really. So she's always deals with the guests really efficiently as well, so she's been a good employee, so I'd be sad to, you know, see her go. So you've got a new life to look forward to now, right? Yes, a new life. Um, going away. Son's going to be a bit shocked Where when I tell him that I've got to live in a caravan. Huh? <laughs> he, he, he don't know. I've never told him this. He's going to be a bit shocked. That I've been, I, I am a gypsy. You are? <laughs> That's a yell. I thought you, eh? My full body's shaking now because I've told him what I am. Really, me, I'm really shaking because I've told you what I am. I really, I am. <laughs> you shot me there a little bit. <laughs> Can you see why Violet didn't tell you? Yeah, because everyone's got the prejudgment of it of gypsies at the moment because they just they're like they're travellers basically, aren't they? And they move on. But she's been here since 2005, so. She's worked hard, she's, like I said, she's always been reliable, so it's changed my opinion of gypsies if, if they're settled, you know, because you know, in, in a work environment, you can't have someone that's gonna move on. But uh, like I said, the reliability and staying, sticking at the job is the key thing for me. And like I said, Violet's ticked all the boxes on that. With her last shift complete and the wedding approaching, Violet Ann's days of independence 
will soon be over. I feel a bit lost, really, to be honest, because I feel like um, that's it now. I've got no work. I've got nothing to do. Uh, so I have to get back in a routine of not going to work. After five years, that's going to be a bit um, hard to do. So, um, yeah, I uh, just feel a bit, a bit lost, really. A woman don't have to work. A traveller wouldn't allow his wife to work. It'd be disgracing, it'd be shaming him. To let your wife go to a job or, or just work, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Whilst traditionally Irish traveller wives are not expected to work, the men earn through various forms of skilled and unskilled labour. Paddy runs and maintains this trailer site in Salford, but earns his money by other means. I get me living in other ways, you know what I mean? Tarmac and drives and all that. I buy second-hand cars, clean them up, tie them and sell them. That's how I get me, me living. So what did you used to do work-wise? I used to do fighting, a lot of it. And I used to fight for money. And that's how I made me living, fighting for money. That's how I got the price of my car and my home. All the years when I was young, I used to fight and I used to bank, save me money, save me money, save me money. So you say fighting, fair enough with fighting? Yeah, one to one, yeah. And that's how you get your money. You know what I mean, no. And that was it, really. Sounds like a rough game, eh? Very rough game. Bare knuckle fights, though illegal, are still common on traveller sites across Britain. Though he retired from bare knuckle fighting over 10 years ago, Paddy still trains in his local gym. For many gypsy and traveller men, bare knuckle fighting is very much a part of their culture. It's just what you're bred for. We we're bred for that. From the day I was born, I was bred to fight. It's bred in you. It's bred in your name. It's a heavy weight in your shoulders because you're dirty. Oh, oh, is that Paddy Doherty? Oh, well, I'm going to have one crack at him. And you want no trouble. And then if you, if you say you want no trouble, well, they take that as your weakness. And it really that's your kindness. And then before you know it, you're fighting. And you don't want to fight, but you have to fight over your name. It was left to the women, there would be no such thing as that. But the women have no say, it's a man's thing. We just have to sit at home and just worry about it. Well, when Paddy used, well, when he used to go fighting, he used to worry, they worried the whole time that when he was gone. It's just, oh, you don't understand, I was down on my knees praying every minute. <laughs> bring him back safe and then bring him back not wounded too much. Fighting culture amongst travellers often includes gambling with some fights drawing bets involving thousands of pounds. But the majority of fighting is about settling disputes. On this traveller site near Hatfield, an honour fight is about to take place. Our film crew is given permission to attend by one of the senior members of the community, who, along with many other people present, wishes to remain anonymous. Well, we've got two young men. they got a bit of a disagreement, so I'll just let them have a fight and get it over and done with. A quiet spot is chosen away from the view of outsiders to avoid any police attention. It's a family feud. Um, what it originally started over for, God knows. But see, this is how travellers sort their own disagreements out. This is the best way to do it. Bare knuckle fights follow strict rules and there is always a fair play referee present to enforce them. <laughs> the fight is delayed. She's a woman. Out the plot. Women at the plot. Show me brother's eye. Women at the plot. Women are not normally allowed to attend fights. Tempers begin to flare before the fight has given its official start. Oh. 
The fair play refs struggle to keep things under control. Eventually, both men square up. A fight can last five minutes, two hours. You got to fight till you draw. It's a proper fight. <laughs> No matter what way the opponent, his eyes cut, his nose cut, his mouth cut, his chin, his teeth goes down his neck. No one's allowed to stop it. The opponent's got to say, I give it best. Best means I give in. All right, let's shake hands now. The fight is over, with one of the men accepting he has been bested. The winner, Dean, is disappointed with the quality of the fight. What happened, Dean? Not a lot, a couple of punches, that's about it. It wasn't what I can exactly, exactly, exactly call a fight. Just that, that's what you call a shit fighter, but he's just an awkward fighter. Somebody shit who can make things problems here, you know? At least you beat him, though, didn't you, Dean? So that's all I'm saying now, lad, yeah? At the end of the day, you beat him. The dispute has been settled, with neither fighter sustaining more than a few bruises. Our film crew, however, has outstayed its welcome. Pat the camera at me face now. So I've always had a 700-pound dog, so I beat him up. It's Violet Anne's wedding day, and guests are arriving from all over the country. How do you think you'll be feeling when you're walking down the aisle today? Oh, I don't know, because I've never done it before. <laughs> Very hot. Very hot. Right. You look very Can you nice. have that bouquet, will you? Very proud. She looks beautiful. Open it. Can you give her any oh. advice? Yes. Try to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> It's a beautiful summer's day, but the heat seems to be attracting unwanted visitors to Violet Anne's dress. Getting the flies off it because it's full of flies. <laughs> Trying to kill the flies. You know what, it's because it's white, isn't it? It's sticky. Do you know what though, they look like diamonds. They do look like diamonds. Oh my God, it's the girl. Violet Ann's husband-to-be has asked not to be filmed. He is concerned that being identified as a gypsy will affect his business. With the vows taken, Violet Ann begins a new life as a kept woman. But for now, she's preoccupied with the smooth running of her big day. Very stressed. People not turning up on time, but that's Gypsy's ways. Nothing never gets done properly or anything right. Something always goes wrong. What's the message about the 
It's the first one I've ever had, ever. And I won it in a raffle. A new life of looking after her husband may be a challenge for Violet Ann. She's got to work alongside her husband now and get on the best she can in life. She has to do what Larry says, really. Where is the photo, man? Tony! Come in quickly! Violet a bit headstrong, <laughs> but as long as Larry can handle it, let them work it out between themselves. Once the celebrations are over, Violet Ann will leave her family home for the first time to live on a trailer site 100 miles away in Slough. How are you <clears> feeling now? Are you looking forward to married life? Are you excited? Oh, very. Are you? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, it goes OK, yeah. What do you think you'll be feeling tomorrow when you're leaving home? Oh, I don't know. Horrible, I think. Talk to me a bit about tomorrow. Oh, I don't really want to go there. I don't oh. want to go there now. Why not? Because I know it'll be... I don't want... I won't want to go. Really? Yeah. For the traveller man, becoming godfather to a newborn child is considered a great sign of respect. Paddy is godfather to over 70 children. For someone to actually be the godfather of a baby, it's a very, very big, it's an honor. Truly it's an honor. For someone to actually stand for your, your child, to me it's an honor, you know what I mean? Paddy has traveled over 200 miles to attend the christening of his newest godchild. Look at this. Would you ever get the toenails painted on that? Huh? Is that a little picture or what is it? By water and the Holy Spirit, she is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring her up in the practice of the faith. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Religious occasions are treated with great reverence by the traveling community. And everyone looks forward to the after party. It took really long and I got really bored. The nicest bit that I like about this party is where you dance and all the cakes that you have to eat. We're all going to dance. Can you take really zoom in like you just did? Paddy, the proud godfather, takes his role seriously, but there is only so far a traveller man will go. Can we get an interview with you pushing the baby around? No. Man don't, uh, man don't do that. Uh, it's not like he's special or anything like that, it's far from that. Uh, you, you'll never see that in a traveller community, you'll never see a godfather pushing the, the baby around. You'll never see that. Not in a hundred thousand million years, you'd never see a thing like that. It's just an embarrassment. You just look like a joke, you know what I mean? Travellers don't do that. Travelling men don't do that. Twenty-two-year-old Violet Anne has moved away from her parents to a trailer site on the outskirts of London. So this is your trailer here? Yeah, this is my trailer. So is this where you're this spending most of your is days? This where and... I spend most of the day. It's like a prison on here at the minute. Don't like it. I hate it where I'm at. Can't wait to be gone. 
miss home very, very much. I hate being away from home. Now that you're in a, you live in a trailer, could you not pull into somewhere near them at one point? Does it work like that? Yeah, I could go near them. Yeah. I leave that up to Larry there where we go and where we wouldn't go. Why would you leave that to him? Because that's a man's job at the end. That isn't a woman's job where to pull and where not to pull and what we do and what we can't do. I leave that up to him because that is in his place to do that. So is it what you expected? Yes. Married life? Yeah. Just getting used to it. I miss work. I never ever thought I'd ne miss work. Never. But yeah, I do. I do miss it. So what would your advice to a 16 year old bride to be be? Do not get married. Wait. And enjoy yourself as much as possible and wait for as long as you can, then get married. Really? Yes, definitely. Too young to get married. You see no life. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. Get out of your system while you can. And then when you get married, it's time to settle down. In the traveller world, in death as well as in life, the male is celebrated. Every year, Paddy invites dozens of friends and family to the cemetery to drink in honour of his firstborn son, Patrick in a distinctly traveller-style memorial service. Patrick died in a car accident along with his two cousins, Andrew and Davy. Patrick shares a gravestone with cousin Davy. Every single year we come back, and every year there's more. There's more people, more people. It gets bigger and bigger, you know? <laughs> Lovely respect. Lovely. I know me, my son and, and my nephew, Pa, will be very proud of it. It's an old Irish saying, dead but not forgotten. You know, as long as you're always with you in your heart, you know, that's, that counts for everything. Poor healthcare provisions contribute to the travelling community having a far lower life expectancy than the settled population. Over half of travellers do not reach the age of 50. Every year since he died, God bless them, we play all his music. They're all his music, that's all his songs. They're all his CDs. And we play that every year. And you know my Rosanna, she don't care who listens, who don't listen. She plays them there and it's her, she don't do that. My Rosanna's very laid back. Do you know when it comes to Patrick, <laughs> the whole world could blow up. You see the poem is here. There is no words, it says there. there is, it's hard to put into words exactly how we feel. But the love I had for you, my pa, is so very real. Just like the genie in the lamp, I thought, if I could just have one wish, I wish that God spared you. But that, that doesn't even give you one little bit of a hint of how you feel. It's 14 years. He was my loved him. He was my oldest child and he was the first to do everything. I was so proud of everything that he did there. I love him so much. It's good. Yeah, God bless me. Now she get drunk today, she'll have a good cry. I go home with her tonight, and she'll say, come on, Paddy, we need to dance. And me and her will just be dancing. Honest to God, you mark my words, tonight me and her will be dancing in, in the front room, all night, with his CDs on. Then me and her, we're like little boy and girl then again, like 16 year olds. Me and her will dance all night. And cheers, my Patrick. Cheers, my son.